When diving into the icy depths of the Pacific Ocean, 13,000 feet down, something strange happens. The oxygen levels suddenly spike. It doesn't make sense since we're surrounded by this terrifying darkness. That's when researchers figured out they were dealing with something totally new – dark oxygen. This special kind of oxygen, formed in the cold depths of the ocean, could change our understanding of the origins of life on Earth. It might even bring us closer to finding life on distant planets. And it was all discovered by accident. Our adventure begins in the clarion clipperton zone, a vast area in Pacific waters that is larger than Mexico. When we dive to the very bottom here, we stumble upon these peculiar potato-shaped mounds scattered across the ocean floor. These are officially called polymetallic modules. They might not look like much, but these little mounds are like hidden treasure chests. Over millions of years, metals dissolved in seawater slowly collect around tiny bits of shell or debris, forming these nodules. Inside them, you'll find valuable metals like manganese, nickel, copper, and cobalt. These elements are crucial for making batteries, like the ones that power your cell phone and electric vehicles. That's why the clarion clipperton zone has become a hotspot for deep-sea mining. Today, 16 deep-sea mining contractors have permission to explore around 20% of its seafloor. This rush to the depths has made researchers curious to find out what's down there. So they've used some advanced machines to collect sediment from the sea bottom. And then things got strange. The instruments started showing something impossible – massive amounts of oxygen produced on the seafloor, in complete total darkness. Now wait, that is not supposed to happen. You see, the deeper you go into the ocean, the less oxygen you find in the water. By the time you're about 3,000 feet down, there is barely any left. The water is too far from the surface for any atmospheric exchange. And to make matters worse, oxygen is constantly being used up by the deep-sea organisms that live there and by bacteria breaking down organic matter. So oxygen production this far down is supposed to be impossible. At first, researchers didn't believe their eyes. They thought the sensors were broken or faulty, because every study ever done in the deep sea has only shown oxygen being consumed, not produced. But they kept seeing the same results repeatedly. For 10 years, this mysterious oxygen kept showing up. Finally, they realized the numbers might not be wrong. Turns out those metal nodules could be producing oxygen, working like batteries. When you drop a battery into seawater, you would see bubbles and hear fizzing, because the electric current splits seawater into oxygen and hydrogen, in a process known as electrolysis. So the researchers' theory was that these nodules were doing the same thing, but in their natural state. And they were right. The nodules were, in fact, electrically charged, carrying about 0.95 volts. That's not enough to split seawater into hydrogen and oxygen. We would need about 1.5 volts for that, the power of a AA battery. But when these nodules cluster together, much higher voltages can be observed, enough to trigger the reaction and produce oxygen. So, in a way, these nodules were generating electric currents strong enough to split molecules of seawater and produce oxygen, even in the complete absence of light. This discovery is fascinating because it completely flips our understanding of how oxygen can be produced. Up until now, we have always thought oxygen was produced by photosynthesis. You know, that process where plants and algae convert sunlight into energy and release oxygen. But in this pitch-black deep-sea environment, oxygen was being produced purely through electrolysis. No sunlight was needed. That's why people started calling it dark oxygen. This finding makes us rethink how life might have started on Earth more than 3 billion years ago. Think about it. Plants need oxygen to survive, but they're the ones that produce oxygen. So where did the first oxygen come from? This complex issue sounds a bit like a chicken and egg situation. But it might have an answer now that we know oxygen can be made in ways that don't need sunlight or photosynthesis. It's possible there was another mysterious source of oxygen back then. 
which could have allowed oxygen-breathing life forms to exist even before photosynthesis became a thing. The dark oxygen doesn't just change our understanding of Earth's past. It also opens up new possibilities for life elsewhere in the universe. If this process is happening here on Earth, it might also be happening on other planets or moons. Take Saturn's moon Enceladus or Jupiter's moon Europa, for example. Both appear to have salty, liquid oceans hidden beneath thick layers of ice. Could dark oxygen be creating oxygen-rich environments in these oceans too? The implications go beyond our solar system. This discovery makes us rethink how we define potential habitats for life. As we explore exoplanets orbiting distant stars, understanding dark oxygen production could help us identify places where life might exist under conditions completely different from those on Earth. Instead of only looking for planets with sunlight, scientists might need to search for signs of chemical reactions that could support life even in complete darkness. This is all exciting news, but let's not forget how our story started with deep sea mining. This is how this process usually works. Companies send down a remote-controlled underwater vehicle, like a tractor, to crawl along the ocean floor. This vehicle picks up the metallic nodules and sediment and pulls them through a pipe up to a ship on the surface. Once they have the nodules, the crew sends the leftover sediment back into the ocean at mid-depth. The sediment eventually settles back down to the ocean floor. So is deep-sea mining good or bad? It's hard to say. On one hand, we found a massive and exciting deposits of metals that are essential for creating new, clean technologies like solar panels and electric vehicles. With the demand for these critical materials skyrocketing, and it could grow by up to 600% in the coming decades, deep-sea mining could be a game-changer. Some studies even argue that this activity might be less harmful than traditional mining. Since it happens far out at sea, it might help us avoid destroying forests or polluting water supplies. Plus, because it's so hard to reach these minerals, it might be easier to monitor this activity, keeping things under control and regulating the process. On the other hand, there is this current fear that looking for valuable minerals in the ocean could disrupt the dark oxygen process. Those metal-rich nodules aren't just sitting there doing nothing. I mean, they're actively participating in the chemical processes that shape our planet. So they could be playing a key role in everything, from nutrient cycles to the formation of new life. Scientists believe that mining could eventually damage marine life and seabed habitats that depend on dark oxygen. Despite its remote location and extreme conditions, the clarion clipperton zone is home to a surprisingly diverse and mysterious range of deep-sea creatures, from ghostly white sea anemones and deep purple sea cucumbers to tiny marine isopods, the distant cousins of the pill bug. But we know little about what's down there. It's believed that 90% of the creatures that live in the deep waters of the clarion clipperton zone are unknown to science. I mean, we do know about their existence, but they don't have an official name and the species can't be identified. Since the eerie creatures that live in pitch-black depths are still pretty much a mystery, it's hard to say if they or their environment would be really at risk if deep-sea mining continues at full speed. What experts do know is that we need more studies, more data, and more understanding. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.